Hi everybody, welcome back to the second lecture. I hope you enjoyed the first one. Uh, for those who are uh, taking this course uh, this semester at MSU, and we are, con we are counting credits starting from this uh, lecture, as we said in the syllabus. Right? The first one you watched, you uploaded. Uh, that was for practice, but it was necessary. Right? So uh, last lecture, we talked about the phasers. I know some of you uh, didn't get the concept yet, um, but we will, um, uh, we will elaborate those with examples uh, during the class. And um, the, um, I mean, the phasers is, it are just the complex numbers, right? But they have special meanings. But then we did uh, this complex number has a polar form, rectangular form, all those things. Uh, I, I mean, the, also we have the very important property, the phasor of derivative um, uh, sinusoidal signal. That's the, um, that's the why we can avoid differential equations and solve uh, algebraic equation only. So, but in any case, there's, there was quite a bit in the first lecture. I had uh, four parts and hopefully uh, we can put some good use um, put them in the good use in this lecture. Um, we will see that as we do the element constraints. So let's jump to the uh, topics of this lecture. We have three topics going to cover this lecture. And we have a connection constraints, basically control of current law and control of the voltage law uh, in terms of phasors. Nothing really different from what you're learning in 201. So, uh, but I'm going to repeat this in greater detail, um, just in case some of you had um, not so solid foundation in 201. But I'm not going to repeat this in uh, Laplace transform uh, in S domain. Second thing is the element constant. You will see why the uh, phasor is so powerful. And then we have the concept of impedance. I'm going to have another example. So there would be three parts to this lecture. And let's jump to just jump into the first one. Um, so the connection constraint we have the two. One is the KCL, right? So that's the controls. Current law. The Kirchhoff current law basically defines the how the current. Um, behaved at a particular node, right? So very simple. But before I go to the Kirchhoff current law, I just want to uh, make sure everybody uh, clear about the current entering or the current leaving convention, right? So for current, any current, let's see here, I have a uh, four element connect. Let's see, this is node A. I have element number one. I have element number two, so on and so forth. Element number three, element number four. And I labeled a few currents. So this little arrow indicates the reference of this current. This is a mark for the current. So in this case, I see the current. I see, let's see, the uh, current. Since this arrow point, let's see the, uh, the current I sub 1 in phasor. And the current entering node A through element R uh, through element 1 is is I1. So this is quite straightforward to everybody. Right? But also we can see we can equally see technically correct is is the current leaving let me change the color. I can do that. So alternatively, somehow it didn't show up. Okay. And so alternative we can see is leaving from node A is negative IA, I1. So this is also correct. So there are two ways to see this. 
So although even the current the arrow is pointing into node A, we can see we can see the um, the current going into the uh, entering the node or going into the node is that current whatever it is, and uh, then the current leaving from that node is negative uh, that current. And there is another point that might um, confuse some of you is the actual value of the i sub one. That does not matter. It could be positive, it could be negative. In this case, actually, we have complex because these are phasors, right? So it, it just uh, keep in mind this is leaving current or the the uh, the uh, the entering current concept. Okay, so with that in place, uh, we have three different flavors to the KCL. One is the entering currents sum up to zero. So that's the the first one and the second one is the leaving currents sum up to zero and the third one is the leaving currents and equal to entering currents these three are essentially the same but they have slightly different uh, different kind of a subtle differences and one of them I preferred we will see uh, in a moment okay so in this case uh, I have three equations written already so the first one here is uh, I have four currents add up to zero so the first one is negative I1 and the second one is I2 the third one is I3 and the fourth one is um, is I sub X so in this case which one uh, sort of which flavor I'm using in this notation I'm using entering currents sum up to zero or leaving currents or the third one. So I have the three choices here. Think a moment. So in this case, as we said, that the leaving current from the node is I sub one, right? The leaving current in this case, this arrow points away from the node, that's the I2. And so it's the same for I sub three and I sub X. So this looks like the first one is this the first equation is is doing this this flavor right okay i hope you got the idea and the second one is i have i sub x so this is the current leaving from the node right and on the right hand side equation i have i have i sub one this is the current entering i have i sub two negative that's also the current entering that node because i sub two is leaving from that node and the negative i sub 3 is the current entering that node through element number 3. So the, in this case, on the left hand side of this equation, we have the current leaving. And on the right hand side of this equation, we have the current entering. So this looks like we're doing the flavor number 3. Right? And the last one here is I have I1 and then negative I2, negative I3, I negative I sub X. So this uh, definitely this the current entering the node. So this is the uh, the flavor A or flavor number one. In any case, is there any one particular we prefer over the other two? Uh, slightly. Let's see if this is the one we're trying to find, right? And all the other three cards are given. So I can use the second one. I can use this equation if if I sub x is unknown, and we're trying to find this one will quickly give us the answer without really moving things around. You can do the using the um, other two equations and then you move x. And that's fine. But this one gave you a direct answer right away, right? So this is that's the kind of a subtle differences. Um, among these these three uh, three uh, I mean equivalent equations, they're really not different at all, right? So you just if you move anything, uh, you just move one step, you get the other same equations. So in this case, the first one you move all the other things to the right hand side and then put negative signs, you get the second equation. And the the, the last one here is if you move move negative i s to the other side, you get the second equation as well. Okay, uh, that's about the uh, connection constraints for um, the first one. Uh, let me see how many minutes I have. 
Okay, uh, I think I will stop here and get another uh, clip. Um,